Hi, welcome to the Israel First television program from our studios in Jerusalem. Great to be with you. I'm Martin Blackham. I'm with my wife, Natalie Blackham. We're the program that looks at the news, behind the news, and we look at the Hebrew roots, spiritual things that are going on in Israel. And an important factor for Israel is what's happening with the One World Globalists, the New World Order, uh, One World Governments, the Freemasons, etc. All these different shady characters behind the scenes and what effect they are having on the nation of Israel and indeed every nation in the world and it's all part of the end time scenario as we build up to the final judgment and uh, the return of Messiah. Now um, the One World Government has been having a One World Government Summit in Dubai. This is very recently and uh, it was co called the One World Government Summit 2024. And it's called, its theme, sorry, was called Shaping the Future. And guess what was on the agenda? Israel. Now, anyone who doesn't believe in the One World Government or New World Order should look at this summit and ask, well, what exactly are they doing at this One World Government Summit 2024? Uh, the One World Government Summit actually had its own web website and it says they had over 120 government delegates from across the world as well as 85 regional and international organisations and institutions in addition to a contingent of leaders and government experts in the presence of more than 4,000 participants. The United Arab Emirates Member of Cabinet Affairs said that the participants participation of 25 state heads reaffirms the summits, the One World Government Summit's pivotal role as a platform for international cooperation, a place to accelerate the progress of societies, whatever that means. And uh, by the way, they are always double speak with everything they say. And as an annual forum for world leaders and government officials, now, you may say, well, all of this is innocuous and it's just nice that all the world governments, isn't it a good thing, Martin, that all the world government leaders are getting together? No, it's not. And at this uh, summit, it, speaking at the annual world government summit, was the infamous and dangerous Klaus Schwab, the CEO of the World Economic Forum and another globalist organisation um, that we need to watch and be wary of. He, he was talking about, at the summit in Dubai, the technological transformation, the fourth industrial revolution, which he says will impact the world for years to come. Now, he asked ChatGPT and AI is becoming more and more relevant, more and more featured in the world. If you don't know so much about AI, artificial intelligence, it's a very important subject to understand what's happening in media, what's happening in the news, what's happening in society in general, a very important topic. And uh, we have spoken on the programme about it before. Now, we asked ChatGPT, which is a software and uh, AI software, to envision how the future will look under his fourth industrial revolution. ChatGPT GPT answered and said, Envisioning a future propelled by the technologies of the fourth industrial revolution will see a new dawn of human civilization. Well, that's a very interesting thing. This is AI saying that, not, I mean, obviously, uh, has to have input. Um, but, you know, there comes a stage where AI, AI has obviously human input, is able to access the internet, etc., and various uh, internet accessible. Um, publications, books, etc. But there comes a stage where AI actually starts to put the pieces together and make its own um, make its own thoughts. Now, it says we see a new dawn of human civilization where artificial intelligence, robotics, the Internet of Things, which is uh, basically the Internet of Bodies. Really, it's when the Internet is can be worked from your physical body, 3D printing, genetic engineering. This is something of concern 
um, that we need to keep our eye on as well. And quantum computing become the foundation of our daily life. This is what AI said. With technologies deployed to combat climate change, which we've talked about before, is just a fraud and a way of the governments controlling your life. Biodiversity and restore natural ecosystems, whatever that means. And some of that, of course, isn't restoring them at all. It is interfering with them. Now, the, the issue, listen, the issue with climate change and all that kind of thing is that God made the world and he made the heavens and the earth, it says, in Genesis, and he made the climate. And all so, who are inside. Maybe. So, uh, basically, if you have a problem with all of that, you have a problem with Genesis and you have a problem with God's creation. God made the thing in balance. It was perfectly in balance. Now, you may say, well, sin has damaged it. It's true. But climate change is a fraud. And we've talked about, as I say, we have uh, mentioned that on the programme before. Now, one of the biggest issues we've got in Israel at the moment is hospitals. Um, the Jerusalem Post has recently said, Natalie, that uh, this is one of the busiest winters for Israeli hospitals in recent years. Occupancy rates in some medical centres have reached over 200%. In the past few weeks for emergency rooms and internal departments. Hospitals have reported waiting times are sometimes 15 hours or more um, that you have to wait before you're seen. The heavy load has caused a chain reaction where even Israel's National uh, Ambulance Service, Magan David and RMDA teams, cannot transfer patients from the ambulance to hospital beds and are sometimes forced to delay additional calls. The high density in internal departments has caused an additional bottleneck as teams are unable to admit critically ill patients for hospitalization. So there's a, a big problem with, with, with the hospitals. It's a, a perfect storm really with the uh, war in Gaza and the injured soldiers plus people who have been affected by having the experimental injectable, plus we have the winter flu season, uh, which some are calling COVID. Now, this is all happening at the same time, so it's a perfect storm for the hospitals, and the Jerusalem Post has correctly reported that um, there is a, uh, it's a very difficult time. Meanwhile, there have been discrepancies uh, in the, the Israeli news of fan between the IDF reports and the hospital reports on the amount of wounded soldiers, unlike past conflicts uh, where the IDF would report the amount of wounded soldiers, they have been failing to do so. Um, but at the end of December 2023, um, the Times of Israel reported that over 6,000 troops had been injured. Now, Yagil Levy, who teaches civil military relations at the Open University, said they add up over time this there could be a long-term impact if we see a big rate of people with disabilities that israel must rehabilitate which can produce economic issues as well as social issues in other words we have a lot of people who have been injured maimed by the war have to rehabilitate themselves into society have to be able to do the basics of living plus working um, and that's a huge, this is a big issue for Israel. Uh, I haven't seen very many people, if anybody, talking about this issue. But this is an not, issue. Not in the men. No. In the men maybe. Now, there is, there is in Israel a system for disabled people. There is facilities, uh, and Israel does try its best, I guess, to look after disabled people, but it. If there is a huge influx of disabled people, then it will um, mean they have to really look at all the systems that they have. Now, uh, at the same time as we have the hospitals full, we have the globalists doing their things. At the same time, we also have big changes in the world regarding AI. And uh, one of the stories I found was about facial recognition. This is something which we have in Israel, which is something which is operating already. And that means it, that your face is photographed and they record that and they, you, they can see your movements or detect your movements 
um, all sorts of things. Now in the United States, Frontline News reports that they're going to implement facial recognition at 400 airports, which pretty much sounds like all of them, but uh, maybe there's more than, maybe than they, that's the major airports, yeah. I guess. It's a major blow to civil liberties and the Transport Security Administration announced this uh, introduction of facial recognition uh, as a way of identifying or confirming individuals' identities in using their face. The automated technology works by photographing passengers and then comparing their biometric data against their identification. The software reads the geometry of your face. Key factors include, that's if you don't know much about facial recognition, the distance between your eyes, the depth of your eye so sockets, the distance from your forehead to your chin, and the contour of your lips, ears, and chin. All of these factors are programmed into a facial recognition software. The facial capture uh, transforms analog information into a set of digital information based on your features. And this digital information becomes a number. I didn't know that, that they're able to uh, put all the facial recognition uh, information into the computer and come out with a number. So it's uh, something we have talked about before, but it's becoming almost underhand with everything happening in the world. It's, it's raising its ugly head. Mm. The surveillance society, that's what it boils down to, that uh, these cameras, CCT cameras, city streets they're covering them that's it we wish is that they can control a lot of things themselves when all these things are in computers so it's not just the facts that they are doing it is like what are they doing with it and what can they do with it mm -hmm. which takes a lot of our freedom and liberty mm -hmm. so and i mean i remember like um Arari, noah Arari, who is saying you know, like they are using all this AI and all of that, and then we will be um, not useful eaters, we will be have useless, eaters. useless eaters. And so when you see all this AI, obviously to have a lot of uh, information, they need to have a lot of people, they need humanity, I would say, but then when all of that is done, we are useless eaters for them. It's like at the back of it. And, and again, this is like a tip of the iceberg. If we were like digging even more, and when we dig, like when you were speaking about certain thing about the hospital, I dig in it, somebody give me some information, and it's very crazy to see what's happening, how they are diverting certain people and putting some others in power, and they have, they have the agenda at the, the, the top of the Ministry of Health and a lot of other ministries in Israel. They know what they are doing. They have, they have agenda and they are implanting it day by day and more and more. And the people don't realize that. And sometimes it's done slowly, slowly and don't, you don't really realize. Some people were saying, well, this is amazing. The hospital is where the Arab and the Jews and the Christian, whoever are there and there is humanity. But when you see behind the scene what they are doing uh, is very, very concerning. Yeah, and the, the, the issue about hospitals, you might say, well, these places of refuge, the Ministry of Health should be there to help people. But if you remember, these are the, exactly the same people that were recommending shutting down businesses for no good reason. Yes. They now class, uh, and I've talked about this before on the programme, they now class COVID as flu. That's official Ministry of Health uh, guidelines. So basically they shut down the whole of Israel for flu. And uh, people's businesses were going bust. And by the way, the same thing is happening, interestingly enough, with the war. They're having exactly the same for those who have... Um, self-employed uh, reservists who have been fighting in Gaza. They have they had, uh, a lot of them have been have struggling with their business, some of them losing the businesses. 
And, um, and this is not in the media. Most right. of the time, this is not in the media. But when we see the reality, like in the hospital, there is stories that we hear firsthand. Mm -hmm. And this is not, is not speak, spoken about it in the media. But there is a lot of very difficult situation mm. which has been made specifically by the like decision that the Ministry of Health is making. But, yeah, I think you at home know about these things, you know, that the governments aren't always acting in our benefits. And I'm, and I'm sure that is the same in, in other countries too. But right. like we, we tell you, we, we can see it also here. Yeah, and, and you, you know that, I mean, that's why you enjoy the program, because you know that there's much more going on than what the media tells us. The media is only giving us a one-sided base base uh one sided story of what's happening in the world yeah. they're not feeding telling us, us feeding they're us. not telling us everything and uh, that's where we come in to try and help you to put some of the pieces together now natalie you've got some things to share with us today yes when we see where we are at now i was looking um because i was praying and and god was telling me i'm releasing really angels now and he's like special angels. And then I find also uh, on YouTube, I was looking for some angelic choir. I heard about different stories and I was looking at certain things. I was trying to find a sound that we need to worship God. And I find something about is, um, some people in Greece, funny enough, his name is Nikos. And I won't say more because you can find it yourself and I don't want to have, I don't want to do publicity, um, you know, all these kind of things. But when I listen to the music and, and the, the funny thing, he had a dream and, and in this dream, he saw angels and he said, no, it was an angel, it was archangels. And they were like with military uh, clues, I mean, uh, array. And, and it's not like khaki, not like the thing that we have. It's like a spiritual armor, spiritual army. And we, I knew that they were from that. And then he heard a sound. And then he said, I was compelled to try to reproduce this song, in, in, these sounds in a song. And he did it. And when I listened to it, Martin heard it and was like, oh, what is this sound? And and is really from the army, the spiritual army. So I always carry on thinking about it. And oh yes, and, and when I was praying, I felt God saying, I'm really seeing also the Archangel Gabriel. And this was not connected, I find this, the, the song after. So it was like, okay, God is speaking to us. We know that there is a very, and, and I'm sure you recognize that, you will know that in your, in your Noah, that we are going into higher spiritual battles because the redemption is coming, the Messiah is coming, there is, there is a preparation. We can see the evil getting more evil and, and getting the holiness of God. We can see the holiness of God more uh, also in people who really desire to follow him. And it's written in Daniel, funny enough, and it's written also in, in Revelation. Uh, interesting enough, uh, the angels and the angel Gabriel is also in the book of Daniel, which is very interesting. Okay, so now let us forward during the time of Yeshua, Jesus, when he was born. And again, there, before his birth, during his birth and after his birth, there was a lot of angelic activity. You can see with Zechariah, with Elisheva, Elizabeth, uh, which was like relative of Mary, Miriam, her name in Hebrew. And you see uh, Zechariah was very afraid. He goes into the temple. It is time for him to go in the temple. And suddenly he saw an angel. And when you see angels, um, and it might have been an archangel also at that time, I don't know, it's not written like that, but I guess it was an archangel. And again, he was very afraid. And, and he said, don't be afraid. And he's speaking to him about his son, John, who is going to be born, who will be uh, the, 
the messenger for, for the Mashiach, for the Messiah, Yeshua. And then you have Miriam, Mary, who has the angel Gabriel. And so we have been very often taught that the angel Gabriel bring good news. But when I was doing some research, which was very interesting this week, this Gabriel, Gavar El, Gabriel, it means like God, the, the, you can see the strength of God. He's one of the highest angels. There is, the, some people speak about there is like four archangels, they might have some more, I, I don't know. It's, it's like, we don't have so much said in the Bible, but you have like Michael, which will be the archangel for Israel. You have Gabriel, who seems to be the highest one, and you have Uriel, we should bring the light of God and then Raphael, which is more the one Rafa, is the one who is healing. The angels is bringing healing. So it's like they are part of the army, the spiritual army of God. And when you look, when you read at the beginning in Luke and in Matthew, you see the angels coming again and again. So he speaks to Miriam. He says, you are going to have a son and his name will be Yeshua, which means salvation. And you have, after he's speaking also to Joseph, because Joseph, they were having the baby and suddenly Herod, the king, was very, was very uh, keen, keen to kill all the boys because he heard by... The firstborn. The firstborn. Yeah, boys. but the boys from right. zero to two years mm -hmm. old, because they heard from the Magi that um, there, was the, there was the savior. And... Mm -hmm. And the time for them to see the light, the, the star, and time to arrive, it was about two years. Now, very interesting, they find out again, I was doing some studies about that. And the Magi, because sometimes we say, well, they were maybe sorcerers, they were like wise men from, no, 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 you know where were they coming? They were coming, they were coming from Babylon, which was where... Daniel was where the Jewish people were exiled and there was a school of, um, of, of Jewish people, of sages. And so it seems that they were, these sages were from Daniel time, like, re, you know, having the stories and searching for the Messiah because they knew that he was coming. And when Herod the king is speaking to them, uh, they know exactly, they say, yeah, the Messiah will come from Bethlehem. <clears throat> because now it's interesting, when you speak with a lot of rabbis, they don't really say where he comes from. Yes, he will be a human. Yes, he will be from the branch of David. But they are not saying he comes from Bethlehem. But they, at that time, they knew, which is very, very interesting. So I think, and, and I want to encourage you, we need to carry on learning about the, our Jewish roots as born again Christian or just Christian, because there is so much depth and we are lost is like, because of Constantine and a lot of political powers were in the Christian church, in the early Christian church, we've been severe of our Jewish roots and we lost a lot of things. And now there is really a movement to learn more and more with the Jewish people and it's adding to when we read the story of Yeshua and his disciples, suddenly the story is so much bigger, is so much like God knew exactly what he was doing. And, and it's like, it's, it's just amazing to see that. So, and also I encourage you because we are in difficult time. Everybody can feel the difficult time where we are. We can see that there is an anti-Messiah, that there is really some anti-believing powers. We know that Satan always wanted to take the place of God. We know that the Mount of Zion is the Mount of God. Again, there is so much things said about that. And, and we know that he wants the place. So we are in high power. But we have the angels and God are saying, okay, I release a lot of angels during the time. The shepherds also some angels. 
es sind die Schuhe, wie du sagen musst. We cannot see things, we can see the Messiah being born now. You know, it was like so exciting. It was like, and, and, and the spiritual realm was like, okay, they were, they were showing up on the earth because it was like, it was major and major events. And, and now we are coming into major events too. When Mashiach, the Messiah, is coming back, I tell you, we need to get ourselves ready and we need to raise up spiritually and listen to the sound of the war, spiritual war, but we know that he's coming as the conquering lion. He's not coming like a lamb, like he came last time. The shepherds were looking after lamb. He came as a lamb, but this time he's coming as the lion of Judah. And if you've got any stories about angels or you want to ask us any questions about angels, then please do contact us at our email which is info at israelfirst.org and uh, we'd be wonderful to hear from you about this subject and uh, if you have any stories about angels that you want to share with us we'd love to hear from you and please tell us where you're watching in the world. Now we have a website you can um, find out a lot of information and get a daily news story it's www.israelfirst.org you can also support us. That's very, very important for the work that we're doing. It's because of your support and supporters across the world that we're able to come to you today in your homes and bring you the Israel First update every uh, time that we have available to us to come into the studio. Uh, so please go to the donate page and there's a lot of information how you can financially support us so we send all our love to you, our shalom from Israel. And remember, we're the program that looks at the land, the people and the language.